Hello, in this video, I may be talking about some Python features that are related to um, kind of web servers. And uh, the first one will be picking up where we left off last time, and, and that was with decorators. Uh, we were learning a little bit about Flask, and we saw that Flask is based on these decorators in Python. Um, the other thing that I want to think about is how we can trace our web applications for debugging purposes. Um, and a lot of the programs we've been running, you know, you can hit run, it runs for a few seconds, and then you either get some output or you get an error. And if you get an error, well, it's right there and you can debug it. Um, when we're dealing with websites, there's kind of this issue that, um, you know, it's running all the time in, in the background, it's kind of running forever and nobody's watching it. And, uh, and then maybe somebody sends you an email and they're like, oh, I was using your website last night and, and it, wasn't, well, it wasn't working. And so what we'll often do when we have a website is we'll collect logs and the logs will contain information about everything that's been happening. What requests have we gotten? What do we return? things like that. So we kind of want to trace our applications to get these logs. And, um, and so combining decorators with argument lists is going to be um, a way that we're going to do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is starting off is trying to look at one application for decorators, uh, which is for building frameworks where we want to kind of get some sort of list or, or dictionary of all the functions in a program. And um, there's different reasons we might want to do that. Um, one is for testing. And so we're gonna be testing this function here. And uh, and you can see, well, it's buggy, right? I mean, it's supposed to add X and Y, and instead it's multiplying them. So, so let me try to write some tests for that, tests for these. Um, testing is actually really simple. I mean, all you do is, while well, you run some code and you see if the answer is correct, right? So I'm gonna create two tests. I'm gonna say test one, and, um, and maybe what I'll do here is I'll say uh, um, assert that, um, I'll assert that add of two and two uh, equals four, right? If I add two and two, I should get four. And, and let me just try calling that here at the end. And um, and so I, I guess I kind of run that to end and maybe I'll just try to print at the end, you know, all pass, right? And, um, and so I guess that's one test case, not a great test case because well, <laughs> it's not showing the bug, right? Let me try adding another test case. I'm gonna say def test two, and, uh, and then I'll say assert that, you know, add, add three and four equals seven. And, and so then if I call that one, and then I try to run it, well, I get that assertion error, right? And I can see, well, it's not working, right? And, uh, and maybe if I wanna be more specific, um, Maybe I'd say something like raise, say something like, you know, if if this is not equal to seven, then maybe I, I raise an exception, you know, add three, four, not seven. And then I can kind of run that. And, uh, and then I get a better exception down here. And um, it, it's very common, right, that we'll actually write a lot more test code than we actually have for our, our kind of original code, right? That's how we make sure it actually works, right? I mean, writing the code eventually becomes the easy part, making sure that it doesn't have um, kind of horrible bugs is, is the hard part. And, and so I could keep doing that. I mean, I could keep calling all these functions one by one, but it's a little annoying. I kind of add a function and then, and then have it down here and I have another one and, and then I have it down here. And, and so really what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a list of functions, something like this. Uh, maybe I'll call it like um, function list and, um, and, and then somehow what I'll do down here is I'll, I'll maybe have this, I'll say function list, or I'll say something like for a test function and function list, then I will call it, right? So that's one way I could do it. And, um, and, and of course, then I still kind of have this pain, right? Whenever I create a new function, I have to add it. I have to add it to the list, right? I have to do that. And, uh, and then I have to do that, right? So this is kind of a clunky way to do tests. And if I run that, uh, we'll, oh, um, append, sorry. Uh, and I'll append here too as well. So I kind of run that and, um, and you see how clunky it is? I even made a mistake. That wasn't intentional, but it kind of demonstrates, right? That I have to kind of match these up or it does nothing. And, and okay, so I have, I have kind of my tests for this. What I'd like to do to avoid kind of appending each time is I'd like to have some sort of decorator uh, that works something like this. I want to be able to say uh, something like this, at test, 
and then maybe here as well at test. And, um, and my idea is that if I have those decorators uh, before these functions, well, then I would like to automatically um, kind of add them to the test list, right? So, so when I'm running this, right, this is really calling the test function when I have this definition. It's calling the test function when I have this definition. I haven't written, written the test function yet, right? So I have to write a decorator up here and I'm ready to call it test. And decorators um, have to take in a function, right? So this is kind of weird, right? Like a reference to test one is going to be passed as an argument to test, right? So this test one function is going to get passed in here, right? I'm passing a function into a function and, um, and I'm just going to return the same thing, right? So uh, boring for now. In this example, I'm not going to do anything interesting with that. I'm just going to return back the same function I have. All right, but I'm going to do that. And let's try to trace through this slowly. I wonder if I can, how much I can kind of fit on the screen. Um, maybe, maybe let me just try to cinch this up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go to the beginning. Okay, so I, I define my add function, which I'm going to be testing. And, and then I define my decorator. Oh, you know what I forgot to do, <laughs> right? So this thing is going to be called whenever I'm defining a, a new function with that beforehand, right? So test. And so what I want to do is I want to say f, fn list.append that function, right? That was kind of my, my big idea, right? So let's, um, let's try this. Maybe I'll kind of snug that up a little bit too. Uh, there we go. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. I have my um, empty function list. I have my decorator. And, and so now, because I'm about to call, or I'm about to define test one, I'm going to pass test one to test, right? Because I have the test decorator, right? Decorators are just kind of these special functions that take a function and they return a function. And so I do that. And, and, and then you can see what I did, right? Um, I have this new test one function and I put it, I put it inside of this list up here, right? So that's kind of cool. And, um, and that's really all that function does, right? And this one, right? I'm defining a new function. So this time you can kind of see what's happening here. I'm passing test two into function. And so, you know, test two is also going to get added to this list, right? So I'm going to kind of step through here and that's great. And, and so now you can see, I kind of have built this nice list with references to the test one and test two functions. And so that means when I'm down here, I can loop over that list, right? So test function uh, refers to the first thing in the list, which is test one. And I run that and that all works fine. And then, um, and then I'm gonna grab uh, the next thing, which is the test two. So now test fn is test two. And I'm gonna call that and, uh, and that is all well. Okay. So that was the first use case, right? So this was a use of decorators where I'm doing testing. Okay. Um, let me show you another kind of um, interesting use case, which is for creating these logs I talked about for web applications. Um, maybe what I'd like to do is I'd like to some, have some sort of like um, thing like this that says like, uh, I'm just gonna delete all the test, test stuff, right? To clean this up, I'm not testing anymore. Um, I, I'd like to print something like add, and then maybe I'll make this a format string, something like this, and then, you know, some, something like, you know, X, and then Y, and then, then I might want to like, kind of like record like, um, you know, like what it returns, right? So maybe I'll put something here. And, and then the idea, right, is that um, if I call this thing at different times uh, like this, I'm gonna get these these things, right? And maybe instead of printing this, maybe I'm gonna say like, um, you know, put to file instead, right? Um, and, and that way, right, I mean, I could kind of have all these records. And if I actually saw the return value, then if somebody kind of calls me up and they're like, hey, I was using your online calculator last night and it gave me the wrong answer, I could actually go back and kind of see, well, what happened, right? Now, this is kind of okay because I only have one function here. What I'd like to do is to have something like this. I'd like to have something like, you know, trace. And I would like it to do this um, for, uh, 
for really um, any number of functions, right? Let's say I have a multiply and subtract and all of that. I, I don't want to kind of have to keep writing code like this for all of them. I just want to say trace and I want it to work. Okay, so, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to find the trace and, um, and it's a decorator. So we have to take in a function and we have to return a function here. And before I've just been kind of returning and, and kind of, well, taking in and then returning the same thing. Here I'm going to do actually something a little bit tricky, right? I'm going to, you know, when I have the add function, I'm going to actually swap it out, right? So what I'm going to do is something like this. I'm going to say, I'm going to find a new function actually inside of a function like this. I'm going to call it my wrapper function. And that's also going to take an X and a Y. And, and my idea here is that I'm going to return that wrapper function here. Well, what this is going to do is when I define the add, it's actually going to swap that out for my wrapper, right? Uh, this time I'm going to do a switcheroo, right? I, I have my add function, I'm going to swap it out for my wrapper function. And, um, and well, one advantage of that is I can actually print these things, right? So maybe I'll just say, um, you know, print, you know, some sort of function. And then, and then maybe I'll say like, well, what the X and Y was, right? I'll, I'll just leave it at this for now so I can kind of see, and then I'll just kind of return, let's say I'll maybe return nine. Let's just kind of look at what it is. I mean, it's a far from complete example, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's try to understand what is here right now. Okay, so I'm gonna step through here and um, let me just try and run to the end. I feel like it's giving me some sort of um, error. Uh, maybe no, why is it printing that? that box there because I, I have my strings in, in weird places is why. Okay, so, so I'm going to kind of step through this to find that thing. And, and so since I have this trace decorator, I'm going to pass an add up to fn, right? So I'm going to do that. And, and then you see it's very weird, like um, I'm defining a function inside of a function. We haven't seen that before, but what this means is that every time that trace gets called, I'm defining a new function here, right? So if I if I called um, trace like five times, well, I would actually end up with having five different wrapper functions, right? Five different functions that all have the same name, wrapper. Okay, so I, I kind of define this new weird thing that all it does is it prints the inputs and then returns nine. And then, then I'm returning this. And what this means is that the add function will get swapped out for wrapper, right? So I'm gonna have something new like this, um, which means that, okay, I'm down here. Uh, when I call add, you know, instead of calling add, it actually uh, kind of calls the thing that my uh, decorator returned, right? Which is wrapper, right? So, so I looks like I'm calling add. I'm actually calling wrapper, and so I call wrapper, and um, and wrapper kind of prints this information out like before, and uh, and then it returns nine. This prints this information out, and it returns nine. Okay, so you can kind of see how. Um, I did some good things and some bad things. I mean, the good thing I'm doing is now I can actually kind of record, um, you know, all the calls to add, uh, and, and I could maybe save that to a file if I want. The bad thing is, is that I kind of broke what it was doing, right? And so how can I actually fix this? And that's where this comes in, right? I passed in the original add to fn, right? And, and, and so what I should do is I, something like this. I should say something like, you know, uh, I should call it, I should call that original one with whatever my X and Y were. Maybe I'll say that's like result equals that. And then, then I'm gonna return that result. Okay, and, and so let me just try to run this through uh, uh, from the beginning to end again. Now, you can see it's very cool, right? Because when I call add, well, when I call add, um, I'm actually calling wrapper. And so wrapper does my extra stuff like this, but it's just extra because in the end I, I call this, which was add, right? So, so <laughs> I'm still ultimately calling add indirectly, but I'm doing some stuff around it. And, and that around part is why we call this kind of function a, a wrapper, right? So it behaves just like before and I get this extra goodies. Let me, let me kind of make this a little bit better. Um, I, I think what I'd like to do is instead of just saying funk here, I would like to say what the name of the function is. So maybe I'll say fn.name. 
And so now I can actually see what that is. And, and then the other cool thing I could do is I could say, well, um, you know, if I swap these two, I could say what the result was, right? I could say, well, I got back this thing, right? And, um, and so now you can see it's running and I kind of get this nice thing that I could have in some sort of log that might help me debug later, right? Adding two and two gives four. Okay, that's good. Somebody comes along later and they see this and they're like, aha, uh, that should be seven, right? I can notice later that there was some sort of bug there. Um, okay, so that's pretty cool. And, um, and I think that, you know, what I'd like to do is how can I do this with other functions as well, right? Like, let's say I have another function, which is, um, uh, let's say it's like, um, absolute and I, I take X, right? And, and so maybe I'll return X here and then I'll say like, if X is less than zero, X, you know, multiply it by negative one. Okay, and so, and I want to trace that one. Okay, here, here's where it gets kind of really wacky, right? So let me kind of change this to absolute down here. What is the absolute of negative three? Okay, let's run this thing. It, it, it's really confusing when I have kind of, um, you know, I'm creating two different wrappers, right? So I'm going to step through here, and um, and I'm going to create this new wrapper function. And um, you, you notice something actually, like uh, when I'm inside of here, right? It's saying that well, that's a frame one, right? So uh, when I'm creating this wrapper function here, that was created when I had a function that was invoked. Right, so so there's kind of a parent frame, right? Every time I call trace, that creates a new frame. And when I'm defining this, I want to kind of think about, well, what frame was I in when that happened, right? That's why I say parent equals frame one. And so I'm gonna return. And you can see it's actually kind of showing it as a ghost here, right? Because, you know, back in 220, what did we learn? We learned when a function returns, its frame dies. And I'm kind of showing you that that's not always true anymore. Um, its frame dies unless that function created another function that might need that data, right? Right here, I can access fn, which is really not a local variable here. It was a it was a parameter up here, right? So I kind of, you know, if this wrapper function is going to kind of live and last later, right? And it does, right? Because it gets returned out, then it still needs to be able to kind of access the frame. Uh, at the time that trace was called, right? And that's why you can see it's kind of a ghost of a frame here, right? If that wrapper function runs, it can still access this fn from up here. Okay, so now I'm defining it again, right? So I'm running this, and uh, and now you can see, well, before I had this frame, which is kind of sticking around for trace, now I'm, I'm creating a second frame, frame two, for trace, and this time fn is add instead of absolute and so i'm going to return that and, and now i'm kind of in this situation right where i have um i have two wrapper functions over here do you, do you see them right i have this wrapper function which is associated with fn or which is associated with f1 so that kind of takes me to absolute and, and then i have this one here which is associated with f2 right and so in the f2 frame fn takes me to add right so my two different wrapper functions have different values for fn, right? So they're kind of wrapping different functions. And, and so that's all good. But let me show you the problem I run into. So I'm calling the wrapper function now. And, uh, and guess what? The wrapper function can only ever take two parameters, right? I, and I don't have two parameters. I only have one, right? And so the way I've kind of set this up, I mean, I have this cool decorator but the wrapper that it's creating is not very general purpose. It's not very general purpose because it has to take exactly two, it has to take exactly two parameters. Okay. And so what I'm going to teach you now is how we can pass in a variable number of parameters, right? So, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of put all this down here for a while and I'm going to create a function f. And, um, and I could take like, you know, X, Y, and 
and Z, something like that. If I wanted, if I don't really know how many I'm gonna take, what I can do is I can have something like, um, you know, an argument list. And, um, and right now this is kind of like one thing, I could pass the list to it, but if I put a star before it, what, what this means is that, uh, you know, I don't really know how many things are gonna come to this, right? So let me print off the argument, maybe I should call it arg list for short. Um, and so let's try calling this guy. So I'm gonna say f of, you know, one, two, three, four. And maybe, what, what is this f trying to do? I'm just trying to say it does something like it returns like the max of the arg list. Okay, maybe I'm just gonna print this down here. So kind of back to the beginning. So I, so I create that that thing. And then I call this, and, and you see that arg list actually kind of looks like a regular list after this, right? Um, it certainly didn't have a list as uh, the parameters, right? It had four different um, arguments passed in, but it ultimately those, you know, however many, um, you know, parameters I have, or how many of our arguments I have, uh, ends up in this nice little list I have, right? So I can see that over here. And, uh, and so that all kind of works fine, right? Or I guess not a list, it's technically a tuple. And so that works great, right? And, and, and that could work, you know, uh, let, let me do it again, right? So I'm gonna step through here and uh, now I'm passing in more things, right? Or, or it could even be empty, right? And then I'm gonna kind of pass in, I'm gonna pass in this empty tuple, right? Okay, so that's kind of cool, right? That I can pass in on, um, you know, whatever parameters down here or whatever arguments down here becomes a list. I can also actually do the reverse of it. Like, let's say I had something like this. Let's say I had a function g, um, and maybe I'll just kind of start at the top, right? So that I can kind of leave uh, multiple examples up here at once. Let's say g takes x, y, and, uh, and z, and uh, I don't know, maybe I'll just like return x plus y plus z, whatever, right? And um, and I have some like values down here, and the values are like one, two, three. Um, and, and I want to use g to add those. I mean, kind of the, the ugly way to do it would be like this. I could say something like g vals of zero, vals of one, vals of two, and, and maybe print that thing, right? Um, I could do that, right? And pass in those three things from my list, right, to here. But there's another trick, and uh, and it's gonna be another use of this star, right? And, and so the way I'll do it is I'll say something like this. I'll say g of star values, and, and I'll just try to print that, right? And, uh, and then let's see what happens. I'm gonna step through here. I'm gonna do this. And so now I'm starting with a list, but I'm going to convert it to a bunch of parameters, right? And then I kind of end up with three different parameters. So this star is useful in both directions, right? A star can take me from a list to a bunch of parameters, and it can also take me from a bunch of parameters back to a list, right? So I kind of in both directions, I'm very flexible, right? If I, if I don't you know, know how many things I'm kind of dealing with. Okay, so that's how we can deal with a very number of arguments. Um, unwinding a bit, uh, we were trying to solve this problem, right? I wanted to have a wrapper that can uh, kind of work for both absolute, which takes one parameter, and add, which takes two. And, and so the way I'm gonna do that, instead of kind of saying, hey, I have to take exactly two here, I'm gonna say, I'll take any number that you want. And, um, and so what will happen? Well, when wrapper is called, I'm gonna get a bunch of parameters, and then I'm gonna convert it to a list called args. Then when I call fn, I need to do this again because I need to go from a list back to a bunch of parameters or back to a bunch of arguments. You see how that works there? It's kind of happening twice, right? So when you call wrapper, multiple arguments go into a list. And then when I use it again down here, that list goes back to multiple arguments, okay? And, um, and so like the one thing that's not trying to work right now, well, first of all, let's just kind of run this thing and see if it, if it runs. It does, which is great. Um, this print is kind of still a problem because uh, this is not right, is it? And so, so what I should do is maybe kind of um, have some sort of arg string here that I'm gonna show. And, uh, 
And well, how can I do that? Um, well, one thing I could do is I could, uh, well, let me just try to do this first. I'm gonna do a list comprehension and I'm gonna say something like um, something for A and args. And I wanna get like the programmatic representation of, of that. I'm gonna kind of run that and, uh, and what, why is it unhappy? Um, Oh, I guess it is, it is happy. It's okay with that. Um, I, I guess I got negative three there. So that's good. And, and so I think what I can actually do is I can say something like, um, if I join that, right? If I say dot join, I can say like, well, that's my arg string. Okay. And, and now I can see, well, this is beautiful, right? Absolute of negative three gives me three. And, um, and what else could I do? Maybe, let me see down here. I guess it's kind of hard to fit a lot. I mean, I could say like, um, uh, let me expand this a bit. Uh, I could say print add of two, two, print add of three, four. And, um, and if I kind of run that to the end, I, I can see it's kind of working for all of these, right? I can, I can trace my different functions with this kind of general wrapper. Right, so I had to do lots of things here, right? I had to use a decorator. Uh, the decorator had to create a wrapper function that both kind of prints some stuff for me and calls the original version. And, um, and to make sure it can work for multiple functions, I had to use variable number of, of arguments. So people will do this for things like their websites, right? So they can kind of trace what's happening um, e even when they're not watching it, right? Like if it's running overnight. All right, so kind of tricky stuff, but, but I'll end it there.